we're going to take a look at the origin of life on Earth. This is the beginning of the evolution option for the IB Biology syllabus. Let's start with these particular molecules in early Earth's atmosphere. You'll notice that something very important is missing. If you can recognize the number of bonds that most of these famous atoms actually make, you can probably recognize that that's probably going to be carbon with four hydrogen atoms attached, so that's going to be methane. Well, let's go through this. Ammonia, hydrogen, methane, nitrogen, water vapor, and hydrogen sulfide. There is no oxygen present there. Oxygen came out a lot later and as a result of photosynthesizing organisms, and so that's going to be very important for us to understand later when we talk about human evolution. In order for us to create life, some things have to be necessary. So at the beginning, we can assume that there was no life on Earth. There is a checklist of things we need in order to generate life spontaneously. First, we need to be able to produce larger molecules, larger organic molecules from inorganic things. For example, amino acids. Amino acids, not too many atoms in there. They are made up of some nitrogen and some carbon and some oxygen in there. But we have to be able to create some of these uh, simpler organic molecules like amino acids. We have to then be able to assemble them into longer chains, polymerization, creating more complex molecules that are capable of doing more complex functions. Another thing we need is we need some of these molecules to be able to do some kind of self-propagation, self-replicating molecules. So some kind of method of copying itself over and over in order to pass on information to future generations. And finally, we also need to be able to separate these specific molecules from the harsh environment. So that means packaging them into something that resembles a cell membrane that allows the contents to be enclosed and protected from things outside. Some of the places we think that some of these molecules might have been originating from would be some fairly harsh environments by today's standards. So deep sea hydrothermal vents, volcanoes, both of these things have very high temperatures and a lot of energy that's available. Or possibly there's a hypothesis that a lot of these molecules could have originated from extraterrestrial locations. Maybe we are uh, from alien worlds altogether. Yuri and Miller did a very famous experiment before where they tried to replicate what early Earth conditions look like. So they put in all these molecules that were supposed to be present, that people have concluded were present in the early Earth's atmosphere. They used electricity to simulate lightning because lightning could have been one of the other sources of energy in order to produce um, all of these new molecules and help to form some of these organic molecules that we've been talking about. And as a result of this, the liquid turned nice and brown and then they analyzed it and found out that a lot of these things had spontaneously kind of restructured themselves into things, including amino acids, by the same structure of the 20 amino acids that make up all the proteins in our body today. Another interesting thing is RNA. See, RNA, if you've studied transcription and translation, you understand the important role that RNA plays in the form of messenger RNA as the message that gets transported to the ribosome in order to produce a protein, using the original instructions that were found in DNA. RNA turns out to have some pretty cool features. First of all, it has bases in there. So there's the letters A, U, C, and G. And we know that that can be a genetic code by rearranging those letters. So that's important. So RNA kind of already satisfies the idea of self-replication or inheritance or having some kind of coded information in there. And also RNA, the way it folds, especially if we look at something like a tRNA molecule, a tRNA molecule has a very specific shape and it's able, although it's single stranded in a tRNA molecule, it's able to fold and form temporary parts that are actually double stranded. So not only can it store some information in the form of genetic inheritance, it can also have a specific three dimensional structure, which reminds us of enzymes because enzymes function because of their specific active site and three dimensional structure. So think of the word ribozyme a chain of ribonucleic acids combined with the properties of enzyme. How cool is that? Ribozyme. So RNA might have been one of those first molecules, making it an ideal candidate for having a major role in the origin of life. A few other specific things to look at about the origin of life. One theory is called panspermia. It's the idea that life may have originated in outer space. 
that comets may have delivered some of these organic compounds to Earth, and some of those compounds could have been organic compounds, like those amino acids. The amino acids could have been delivered from elsewhere, and then possibly water itself could have been delivered as well, too. In our checklist of the things that are necessary for life to spontaneously be created, one of the things we said was we needed specific little containers that could protect these molecules from the harsh surroundings. Two of these things are coacervates and microspheres. They're examples of protobionts. They're things that may have come before actual living cells, but they may have provided that kind of enclosure space to protect those molecules from some of the harsh environments that are around. The difference between them are that coacervates are lipid-based and microspheres are protein-based. When we looked at the gases that were present in early Earth's atmosphere, we noticed that oxygen was missing. Oxygen didn't come about until a lot later in the process, and prokaryotes are to thank for that. Prokaryotes, especially those that are photosynthetic, were able to convert things like carbon dioxide into organic molecules for energy and then produce oxygen as a waste product. So that oxygen waste product began to slowly fill the atmosphere and it's what we need to survive today to do aerobic respiration. Also this contributed to the formation of the ozone layer. So don't think bad about bacteria. They actually did some really good stuff for us to help bring us to where we are in life. I love bacteria. One final thing we're going to look at about the origin of life or ideas about the origin of life is something called endosymbiotic theory. This is very interesting. Endosymbiotic theory supports the idea that these two famous organelles, mitochondria, our powerhouses providing energy, and chloroplasts, the organelles in plants that actually do photosynthesis, were once free-living prokaryotes. In other words, they were once bacteria that were engulfed, that joined together with larger prokaryotes and survived to evolve into the modern organelles. So we think that modern day eukaryotic cells with our mitochondria and chloroplasts in there or the result of some kind of symbiotic relationship and now it's just a common type of cell and we have a difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. If you're not too convinced about this, then take a look at some of the evidence there. If you've studied mitochondria before, then you understand that mitochondria has something called mitochondrial DNA, which is not the same as the DNA that's found inside the nucleus. And chloroplasts also have DNA in there that is separate from the DNA found inside the nuclei. Both organelles are surrounded by two membranes, and that looks a lot like the composition of what a bacterial cell actually looks like, a prokaryote. In the cell cycle, during the G1 and G2 growth phases, when we are actually making more organelles, uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts are actually produced in a way that looks very close to binary fission, which is the way that bacteria actually reproduce. And finally, the internal structure and biochemistry of chloroplasts is very similar to that of cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria are specific bacteria that can actually photosynthesize and make their own organic molecules. Here's a little diagram you can check, but you can go to Google Images and find any kind of diagram that will show you this. A lot of people have made very creative videos on YouTube uh, demonstrating this process of endosymbiosis and how it might have arisen.